This is not clickbait. I have some serious concerns about you because of a tech release. And it's the first time where I've made a video like this. It's the first time where I've actually shared my heart on a topic like this. But I think it's absolutely vital that more people will start to talk about this because the first time I've seen a tech company release something that is not making our life easier, it's making our life worse. And no one seems to be getting it. No one seems to be talking about the morality of this, which makes me quite angry and you should be very angry as well. And I don't know why no one is talking about it. What I'm talking about is the Apple Vision Pro. People say this is the future of tech. Believe me, this is not the future of tech. Well, I hope it's not because this is completely going to ruin your and my life and that comes from a guy who runs tech channel, who helps creatives make a decision, you know, which tech to use. But I feel like this is crossing the line. Here's six points why I think this is crossing the line. And this is the only video I'm going to be making about the Vision Pro because I am not going to buy it. I'm making a point of not introducing or endorsing it to my channel to my children because we have to be very careful with it point number one the kids they are the most valuable most innocent beings in the world and they are the next generation and we have to be very very careful how we want to form their future they say that this tech is the next generation of tech and if it is i have some serious concern that we're completely going to ruin the western world how we see it and a third world would actually be a better place to live because we've ruined the next generation i know it makes me feel really old but it's true and it comes from the person who actually has four kids so i know what it's like to be a dad to try to shape your kids future and give them the best what is best for them not for me but for them it's not tim cook who is telling what's best for you because he doesn't have any kids so he wouldn't know what's good for kids research what is best for kids is not the same of having your own kids and knowing how this will affect your kids in fact even tim cook has said in some kind of article that uh, he wouldn't want to contribute to the kids screen addiction i mean let's look at smartphones for a second this is bad enough we've completely lost our kids to smartphones and social media and honestly there is nothing good about it it's not making our kids' lives better. It's not making their lives easier. It's making it worse. Smartphone is a stimulant. Um, they are designed and engineered by these uh, companies to stimulate the brain. All the bings and tings and rewards and vibrations are stimulating the brain. Colors. Colors, flashing lights, all of these things are stimulating the brain uh, to release uh, dopamine, which is a neuro messenger in the brain that is correlated with the pleasure centers uh, of the brain and reward centers of the brain. So it's actually stimulating the neurochemistry of the brain in the same manner that perhaps uh, uh, gambling or pornography would. Now taking the Vision Pro and blurring the line between reality and on reality aka disillusion is actually a very dangerous thing because kids don't need an alternate reality where they can you know do things that perhaps they are not allowed to do in real reality because can you imagine what this is going to do for a second what children and kids need is to be taught interaction with real people how to communicate with real people, how to love real people, the real connection with people, not with screens or a different reality that can become their reality. And when you blur that line, oh my word, that is a dangerous thing to do. I'm not talking about imagination because that's very good. I'm talking about blurring the line between reality. And if you're more than 30 years old, Perhaps even younger, I'm sure you agree with me, when you look at the Western world, kids, the teenagers, the young adults who are going around right now with the smartphones and social media, it has destroyed them. I've had the benefit and the blessing of growing up without it and then with it. So I know the difference between and before and after. So I know what's good for my kids and I can tell you, and I'm sure you agree with me and you can tell the same thing, it was better 
before and we have to protect and make sure that our kids get the same thing. I mean, look at the statistics. You don't have to look much further when you see that self-injury, mental distress, mental illnesses, suicide are at all time high at the young kid's age. And we're saying social media connecting people, really? Are we helping them? I mean, let's be real for a second. We all know that's not the truth. And that is the cause of all these issues. Now imagine adding a Vision Pro there. I know we're not talking about giving this to the kids, but believe me, very soon, the parents will give it to the kids. And that would be the ultimate insanity. And I think the parents who do that, they should go to prison because you're ruining your kids' lives. Smartphones have slowly brainwashed our kids, the way they interact and they can't work anymore, they can't get a job and they have attention span, you know, for three seconds. Dalty? Can you hear me? Dalty? No. Did you hear me? Why? Well, I know why. Because these things, VR headset, would take the brainwashing to another level and actually would make them brain dead because they prefer the virtual reality, the virtual avatar of themselves because it's better, it's better looking, everything's better in the non-reality and you don't have to face the reality and you prefer the non-reality to the real reality. Oh my goodness. If you blur that line for the kids, that is very bad. And how are we gonna do that? Well, the adults. And here's point number two. The adults, and I know the tech is exciting and the breakthroughs in terms of all the sensors and 3D scanning and, you know, IR sensors and all that, th that is great tech. But to worship the tech, we as adults have to be very careful how we use it. Because the kids see us liking it, worshipping it and loving it, they're going to see how their mom and dad are going to escape more to the virtual reality to get a break from life and the kids and the adults excuse is that it helps them capture the dear moments of life oh my word come on apple are we really trying to introduce that people wear these to take pictures and see their kids instead of actually being with the kids and having memories creating memories for your brain not for something to relive and so you don't have to remember the moment but let someone else remember something else remember the moment so we could relive it later i mean that's not how we create it this is insanity this is mental can someone see that this is perhaps not what we're supposed to be doing are we actually gonna miss the real reality and put on a headset to experience real life through a vr headset that's not real apple it's not a spatial computing device it's a vr headset that crosses the line between reality and unreality. And we are helping to blur the lines for the next generation. And guess what the next generation actually needs? What they're after? What are they thinking? Mr. Tim Cook, those kids are saying, please, can you be with me? Please, can you take that thing off your head? And why is that on your head? Can we think about this for a second? Just be with your kid. That's the best thing that we can do with the kids. And if you screw on your perverse brain for just a few seconds, the adults will take it in their bedroom. They will take it to be alone, to watch porn, to do absolute sick things. I mean, just imagine the developers, what stuff they're going to develop for this for 18 plus content. And to think that the kids see you use it, the kids see you being alone with it. This is not normal. And this leads me to the next point, which is normal. So you and me uh, have lived a little longer than the next generation. And we know the difference between, you know, with it and without it. But here's the thing. When you give this to the kids, they will grow up with it. This will be part of their lives. And this is so ingrained into them that this will become normal for them. And that's a dangerous thing because soon you'll hear cases where the adults are just gonna give the headset to the kids so that the kids can just be free and not bother them or give them a break so that they can have break from life or from the kids and then give it to the kids. I mean, this is the most insane thing that we could do for our children. Just be with the kids. I know it's hard to be a dad. I know it's hard to spend time with them. I know it's shattering. It's hard work and well done all of you who do that. If you're having children, this is part of your responsibility and part of my responsibility. And imagine now a kid with that headset 
they're going to prefer the virtual reality instead of the reality because the virtual reality will stimulate their senses even more and it's going to give them more and easier pleasure than the real life. There is not going to be an adult there in the virtual world because you can perhaps do things in there that you're not allowed to do in real life. And when taking off, the adult becomes the bad parent. Can you see how we're crossing the line and we really have to question the morality of this? I mean, if you look, all the reviews online are saying that this is an awesome tech and I can't believe how awesome this is, how good this is. And all the celebrities and tech influencers are just worshipping the tech. And all the kids will see the adults worshipping the tech, which means they want to be like them. Obviously, I'm sure I've made that point clear already. Do we really need this thing? Is it really going to make our lives better? And yes, the tech is cool, but I do think it belongs in a workplace in an industrial world of 3D modelers, 3D architects, machine engineers who can actually look at a model or a device or a machine and then actually use it at work, but not at home. This is not a good idea. And number four, we'll have to stop making the excuses for it. It's going to make it easier to communicate with people and finally connect with your loved ones. What a whole lot of bull. I know what it's like to have a long distance relationship. I've got a family who doesn't live in this country. They live thousands of miles away. And I know what it's like to actually communicate with them and try to stay in touch with them and not lose the connection. Of course, it's hard. There's nothing that compares to the grandparents coming to see my kids and having the face-to-face -face interaction, the hugs, the emotions they share, there's nothing that can replace that. There is no tech or virtual reality how we can connect and do that. We will just be fooling ourselves into that emotion and then later wondering, I wonder why I'm feeling down or I'm feeling depressed and alone. And we're making excuses to have the tech to communicate with people because we're saying, well, it's cheaper to fly and see your family. It's faster. We can just call the avatar mom and, you know, visit them and have an interaction with them. And it connects me with people. Are we sure that we're not making those excuses to use the tech and actually go see your loved ones? Perhaps the distance needs to be long so you would appreciate them when you actually go and see them. Perhaps it should take some time to get there so that you would appreciate and value the time you have with them. We human beings have the tendency of not valuing things that come to us easy. I mean, the other thing is that they say that you can teleport yourself or take yourself into a different immersive re unreality. Let's call it unreality because it's not reality, right? You can go to the moon, you can go to Hawaii, you can go to um, Venus probably later, or you can go to places that you haven't been. You can go and see the northern lights, you can go see the stars. Why don't you just go outside and look at the stars? It's a bit cheaper than the Vision Pro and better. In fact, go and take your girlfriend out to that romantic dinner, not to your living room, uh, with a headset because you'll know people are gonna do that. We can make all the excuses we can But we're actually just deceiving ourselves of the real reality Number five is better is worse and what I mean by that is is this actually gonna do something better than what we already have I mean, I could definitely see this being useful in a 3d, you know modeling world and 3d model as architects engineers, machine experts, you know, perhaps some energy and simulation that could be very good in terms of just work environment. I can see that. But l let's talk about the, the consumer tech people who this is targeted to, what Apple is actually talking to. They're not talking to the 3D modelers. They're talking about you and me, the everyday people who can finally experience something amazing. So, uh, typing messages and answering your emails. Is this really going to be better on the VR headset? No, not really. In fact, a lot worse. It's, it's just going to be a nightmare. You're still going to have to connect your keyboard and mouse to it to get a proper experience of typing if you wanted to have that. Watching movies. Wow. You can now watch movies on the streets in the middle of Times Square watching a big movie just by yourself there among other people. Just another excuse to be alone, not connect with people. Do you remember the time where we actually had to meet up with people and go to see a movie and it was actually an interaction, something we did together, not alone? Another excuse. Is it faster than a computer? 
well, perhaps in some benchmarks, but I would like to see a person who edits a video faster with their Vision Pro through this than with a keyboard and a mouse. I dare you, challenge accepted. And sixth and the last thing is the health disadvantages. I mean, no one is talking about the effects of this and what does it do to our bodies? Here's a few questions I have. Is it really healthy? And we know staring at a screen is bad, but scary, staring at a screen really close to your eyes, how good is that to you exactly? What does it do to your brain? And how many accidents are gonna occur because people are using this in real world? They're using this on the streets, in the car, in places where perhaps you should just keep your eyes open, actually look what's going on around you. And this is not actually talking about the mental illnesses and the mental impact this is gonna have our mental health. Let's just say I've got a few questions and concerns that I'd like to warn you about, and I hope you get what I mean. In conclusion, I don't really see how this tech is going to make our lives better. I mean, feel free to convince me in the comment section below. But all this tech is gonna do is make us more alone, more problems with interacting with people, introduce more mental illnesses, and actually make our lives worse. Tech is meant to be separated from reality, so we know what is real and what is not. You use your PC to create something. That's what we're doing on this channel. We wanna use the PC to help creatives who do photo, video, 3D, whatever, to create something, and then they go and interact with people. You have a clear line of switch on, switch off, but this here is blurring the line, and this is the other way around, because you'd start to prefer the unreality to the reality, and that is what concerns me, especially when we're blurring the lines for the kids. and people are going to interact with it in different ways. Some people will connect with it. Thousands of people have worked for multiple years to yeah. deliver this. Well, you can see 